everybody. Um, I thought I'd just uh, make a brief video to document, mostly for myself, but in case anybody else is interesting, a telescope that I acquired. Um, this was originally built by one of the members of the uh, Chabot Telescope Makers Workshop. Um, and it's kind of unusual. Um, it's one of a pair that um, John Cooper, who made this particular telescope, and Kevin Medlock did um, many years ago. And uh, it came to me via t via Kevin. Thank you, Kevin, for the incredibly generous gift and, and to John originally for making it. Um, it is called a Schiefspiegler telescope, and it's an unusual design in that the down in here, you can see there's a mirror in the back. So the light comes in past the end up here, down in here, bounces up off this secondary mirror here, then down the tube, out through the eyepiece. Um, this is uh, probably the most straightforward uh, tilted component telescope uh, is the class of uh, reflectors that they're known as. This is a four and a quarter inch, uh, probably F2527. I have to remember uh, exactly what the uh, original design was. I believe uh, Anton Kutter was uh, the guy who originally came up with the design and popularized it. I've actually started work on a three inch uh, one many years ago and that I never finished. Um, they're really interesting scopes in that they have really long focal length. There are no obstructions. Uh, there's no diagonal in the way. And uh, I'm really looking forward to getting this one uh, back up and running so that I can uh, test it out. It should be a lot of fun. Um, it came with this uh, half fork design, which, uh, needs to be mounted on something. Um, I'm going to be picking up the original pipe mount that it had in the next couple days. But uh, basically, this uh, axis will bolt onto this thing and will mount on a tripod. And that should be it. Um, the telescope seems to be in really good shape. One of the things I want to do is make some dust covers for it. I think I'll just make a, a little uh, circle that, that will fit inside here, maybe even out of... Uh, foam core, I'll have to see, and then something to uh, block up this, probably a, a little snood or something to, to go over the top of it. Um, this week is also kind of a sad thing, sad week for me in terms of telescope making because uh, uh, the memorial will be held uh, this week for Paul Zurichowski. Um I was over at his house helping uh, his family clear out their, their stuff and they really graciously offered to allow me to haul away a few goodies. Um, one of which I'll show you here is just, it's a nice little book case, but um, it's got a nice match set of University Optic eyepieces. These aren't, opt they're mostly orthoscopic design, so they're fairly old. They're not, you know, it's been modern. Uh, modern eyepieces are a lot more complex, but these will actually be perfect uh, to use with the, uh, with the sheaf and uh, some filters and even a little clock motor. So that's really cool. Um, Kevin uh, also gave me this Unitron focuser. Um, the existing focuser on this scope is a uh, just a draw tube, a friction fit, and this is a nice rack and pinion. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. I may actually 3D print an adapter to make the, the Unitron fit on it. It's kind of nice to have a... a a good focuser, but um, the telescope being F27, the depth of focus is really large, so it's not clear that it's absolutely essential. So that might be a, a project for later. But um, uh, a couple of the things that I had in here, the uh, drive motor had a battery case in it and uh, the batteries here are pretty corroded and not so great. This is basically just turning these six double A's into a nine volt pack. I may actually not salvage this. I may just create a, a better uh, nine volt source, either from nine volt batteries. I think the reason they did this is for greater, uh, you know, greater power, greater length, uh, total charge would be a lot higher from six double A's than from a single nine volt, a lot better current. But um, now, of course, we could manufacture whatever voltage we want out of and use lithium ion or some other similar battery technology that would be probably even lighter and more energy dense. So uh, I may actually do something with that too. 
But anyway, um, I also spent some time this weekend um, fixing up this tripod. Um, this is one I've had for a while. Um, you can see I've got a hex cap screw set on top of it, which I got because I found out that one of the screws was missing <laughs> and I didn't have any lying around. So thankfully, uh, six bucks at Harbor Freight gave me the uh, one screw that I needed and this is up and running again. I actually used this for my six inch F4 scope uh, for a while, but um, I'm still pondering whether I'm gonna use the pipe mount that this thing originally had or whether I'll make some kind of an adapter and, and mount this on there. Um, there's no clock drive or anything on this, um, which is an interesting thing, but the machining is really nice. Um, I suspect that Kevin had a hand in doing this. He's a, quite a talented machinist and, and knows a lot about telescope building. So, um, I'm really looking forward to getting this together. I've, uh, also finally remembered where I put my, uh, high quality Raspberry Pi camera. And so the possibility of hooking that camera to this scope is actually pretty intriguing and uh, would be good for doing planetary astronomy and, and other stuff as well, I'm sure. So um, we'll see what, what that works out to. But uh, anyway, this is just me doing some stuff in the shop, just basic cleaning. Uh, I've been wiping this down a little bit with some isopropyl and just trying to get it ready to go. And uh, anyway, thank you again, Kevin, and to John originally for, for building this scope. Um, I really, it, it will definitely be a, a precious member of my uh, collection of scopes, um, and uh, I hope uh, I uh, will do it justice. So thank you again.